maybe God willing to make, to give you people good reason to come back home for good so that we can rebuild, we can rebuild this, our country together. And we know that is going to be possible, God willing. Our friends, I intend today to address you on three things mainly. One, I want to address you on the status of our struggle. Two, I want to address you on what we stand to lose if we do not win. And three, what we can do together as a people, as a generation, as citizens. Now, regarding the status of our struggle, I want to give you assurance like I've been giving you all along that the balance of forces is in our favor. Ladies and gentlemen, all signs are very clear that Museveni is on his way out uh, from the east to the west, from the south to the north. You'll find all people resolved to, you know, change their circumstances. Our people have never, in my memory, been as determined as they are today to free themselves from the oppression and uh, the suppression that they go through today. Everywhere you go in this country, including, you know, Western, deep, deep in the West, places like Chihuahua, where President Museveni comes from, people are saying enough is enough, you know. Just the other day I was meeting four women from Zimbabwe um, that were sharing with me. These women were from Changkwanzi, they were sharing with me. And yes, we continue to get people from different NRM strongholds. But these in particular that came from Changkwanzi, you know, one of them was a widow of a fallen UPDF soldier. Uh, the late husband served both in the NRA and in the UPDF. But when uh, the husband died, you know, the woman has been moving every now and then to try and uh, claim the husband's benefits. But as expected, you know, she has been tossed, come back next month, come back the other month. And not just that, another story that I got from another woman uh, was that she had just lost a sister. That sister died during the COVID times, she fell sick, but she could not uh, access healthcare. The nearest hospital was about 10 miles away. Now, without transport and all that, she witnessed the pain, uh, you know, directly. Now, that and more has happened all around the country. And, uh, you know, you notice that these and more are what are pushing our people to realize that all of us are suffering and all of us are slaves. This lady could not get even transport in the dead of the night, you know, to take her little uh, sister to a healthcare, uh, a health, uh, you know, facility where she could, uh, you know, deliver. So she died in pain. Many, many stories have been narrated and uh, this only reminds us of the pains of a sick healthcare system. But again, these are the few people that I connect with. These are the, people, the few people that I get opportunity to interact with. But I'm sure all you comrades that get to talk to Ugandans from different walks of life, their stories give you more, you know, paint a more clear picture on why people are resolved to say seven must go. They tell on how they have previously supported the regime. And some of them have even helped in rigging elections for regimes, for the regime. But in their own words and actions, they say they have helped to entrench a regime that now they find themselves so responsible to participate in the removal. I mean, they want to pay back by you know, working so hard to stop a regime that they helped to bring up. Friends, the people of Uganda, old, young, men, women, from Achori to Karamoja, from Chigezi 
to Sebei, from Bugisu to Lango, from Acholi to Busoga to Uganda, all places, all parts of this country, all regions of this country, all of them are ready for change. That is what gives us confidence. That is what makes us keep saying the Wali Kuzikiza. Many, many, many Ugandans had given up hope. Many of them had resigned. They had given up to despair. But, you know, thanks to the emergency of people power, now everywhere you go, people are saying Mission 2021. People are geared up for change. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude this point again, I will re-emphasize that the balance of forces is in our favor. But what if we do not win? What if we fail? What does that mean? Friends, that means another five years under Museveni. It means another five years of oppression, another five years of pain, another five years of 18 mothers dying every day, another five years of more than 300 children dying every day, another five years of stinking corruption, stinking nepotism, stinking tribalism, it means more five years of repression, more five years of no assembly, more five years of closed places of worship, more five years of, you know, extrajudicial killings. That's what it means. Five years under my seven. It means that more Muslims are going to be targeted by the state. It means extreme violence against the opposition. It means targeting and suppression of whoever dares to speak up against the regime. That is what it means. Five more years of Museveni means death. So now you must have heard that the government is trying